Well, we're up to lesson eight, section 6.4, the values of trigonometric functions. Uh, we're going to be sp spending most of our time in this lesson talking about reference angles, and I'm going to remind you from time to time that we always are going back to the x-axis. We don't go back to the y-axis. And here's a definition of a reference angle. Let theta be a non-quadrantal angle. Remember, those are angles that are, uh, quadrantal angles are 90, 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, those angles. So let theta be a non-quadrantal angle. The reference angle of theta is the acute angle, and you see that we have it as uh, theta sub r, that the terminal side of theta makes with the x-axis, and that's either the positive or the negative x-axis. We always draw back down to the positive or negative x-axis, and so your answer is always acute, and it's always positive, which that all acute angles are positive. And so I'm pointing it out here that if this is the terminal side of the angle, then that's our reference angle. If this is the terminal side of the angle, then that's our reference angle. If that's the terminal side of the angle, then this is our reference angle. And if this is the terminal side of the angle, well, then that's our reference angle. Reference angles have to be acute angles. There are positive angles between 0 and 90 degrees or 0 and pi over 2 radians. They can be measured in degrees or in radians. Um, most of you, I think, prefer degrees. But remember, radians are they, they, they're, they're, the, they're, the, they're the language of circles. Uh, just kind of like metric is the language of science, but for some reason in this country we don't seem to like metric either. Now here's some formulas, and students, a lot of students like formulas. I personally don't. Uh, I think we're overthinking this. We're just trying to get the acute angle between the terminal side of the angle and either 0 or 180 degrees or 360, depending on what quadrant you happen to be in. Um, I usually drop negatives. I usually don't think about it too much um, and just get that acute angle. But depending on what quadrant we're in, if you're in quadrant 1, it's just going to be the angle. If you're in quadrant 2, it's going to be 180 degrees minus the angle. In quadrant 3, where the angles are bigger than 180, it'll be the angle minus 180. And if you're in quadrant 4, it's 360 minus uh, the angle. But let's not, let's not spend too much time worried about formulas. Again, we're looking right here, right? Find the reference angle of uh, theta sub r for theta equal 132 degrees. Well, 132 degrees is over in quadrant number 2. So we take 180 degrees minus 132 degrees, and we get 48 degrees. That's the reference angle, 48 degrees. If I know the sine, cosine, and tangent of 48 degrees, then I know the sine, cosine, tangent of 132 degrees. I can play with the positive negatives later. How about 236? Well, 236 degrees is over in quadrant 4. I'm sorry, quadrant 3. So we take 236 degrees minus 180 degrees, and we get 56 degrees. And 50, if I know the sine, cosine, and tangent of 56, then I know the sine, cosine, and tangent of 236. We can play with the positive negatives later. Uh, here's my quadrant 4 angle, 311 degrees. <clears throat> so to find the reference angle, 360 minus 311, we get 49 degrees. There you are. If I know the sine, cosine, and tangent of 49 degrees, then I know the sine, cosine, and tangent of 311 degrees. Now, negative 120, don't freak out too much here. Uh, you, negative 120 is over in quadrant 3. You start at 0 and you go clockwise because it's a negative angle, and you end up down in quadrant 3. So here's the official way to do it. Because it's a quadrant 3 angle, we go negative 120 minus a negative 180, and that ends up taking 120 away from 180, which is 60. Most students would have just taken 180 minus 120 and gotten 60 because it, it doesn't make any difference. The reference angle for negative 120 and the reference angle for 120 are exactly the same. So it depends on how you want to do it. Let's not try to overthink it too much. Make sure your answer ends up being acute and make sure your answer is positive. Those are the two things we need to know about that. Now back to this though. If I know the sine, cosine, and tangent of 60 degrees, which by the way you should know, then you know the sine, cosine, and tangent of negative 120. Yeah, you know, it's a 60 degree angle down in quadrant 3. We can do this. All right, so there you go. You got your angle and your reference angle all the way down the line there. And notice these are always acute and they're all positive. All right. Well, let's go with a radian angle. So 5 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3 is over in quadrant number 4. So I take 2 pi minus 5 pi over 3. Now I turn 2 pi into 6 pi over 3. I needed a common denominator. I subtract 5 pi over 3 from it, and I get, well, pi over 3. And if I know the sine, cosine, and tangent of pi over 3, then I know the sine, cosine, and tangent of 5 pi over 3. How about negative 3 pi over 4? 
Well, that's back there in quadrant. Now, again, you know, we're going negative from the zero. We're heading down, so we're going to be in quadrant three down there. And uh, here's the official way to do it: negative three pi over four minus a minus pi. So that's going to be negative three pi over four plus four pi over four. That's two negatives there, and we end up with pi over four. So if I know the sine cosine and tangent of pi over four, which we should know, then I know the sine cosine and tangent of negative three pi over four. How about seven pi over six? Well, 7 pi over 6 minus pi is 7 pi over 6 minus 6 pi over 6, and it's pi over 6. So the reference angle for 7 pi over 6 is pi over 6. And if I know the sine, cosine, and tangent of pi over 6, then I know the sine, cosine, and tangent of 7 pi over 6. How about 21 pi over 4? I don't even know where 21 pi over 4 is. I'll tell you what, the reference angle is pi over 4. If I asked you for 1,003 pi over 4, you'd figure that out too. How about 1.2? Now, 1.2 is not something we know too much about. And so here's something you might want to do. You might want to knock out uh, the decimal approximations for pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. You could put 0, 6.28 here if you want to for 0 and 2 pi. But that helps us a little bit to know where 1.2 is. And 1.2, I'm back to that, 1.2 is right here in quadrant 1. So one, the reference angle for 1.2 is, well, 1.2. You, you, I, I didn't show you 1.2 minus 0, did I? How about 2.3? Well, where's 2.3 at? If you go back to that little chart there, 2.3 is, is in quadrant 2. So pi minus 2.3 is 0.8416. And there's your reference angle, 0.8416. 3.6, well, that's between 3.14 and 4.71. So that's in quadrant 3. So I take 3.6 minus pi, and I get 0.4584. That's your reference angle. And if we end up over in quadrant 4, 5.6 is between 4.71 and 6.28. So I take 2 pi minus that, and I get 0.6832. Now, how do we use these? Well, the sine of 135, I do not know 135 degrees very well. But here's my process that I go through. I get the reference angle, which if I take 180 minus 135, I get 45 degrees. And I know the sine of 45 degrees to be 1 over square root of 2. Therefore, the sine of 135 is also 1 over square root of 2, but I don't know about this. This question mark is whether it's positive or negative. I'm not sure. But at least I have the absolute value of the sine of 134, 135. Now, since 135 is in quadrant 2 and sine is positive in quadrant 2, my question mark becomes a positive. So I end up with the sine of 135 is 1 over square root of 2. 135 degrees is the 45 degree angle in quadrant 2. That's why its sine is 1 over square root of 2. How about the cosine of 240 degrees? Same deal. I want to figure out the reference angle, the cosine of the reference angle, and then I'll worry about the positive and negative later. Here we go. 240 minus 180 is 60. This is the 60 degree angle down in quadrant 3. The cosine of 60 is, 100, is 1 half. So the cosine of 240 is 1 half. I'm not sure about positive or negative, though. Now, since 240 is in quadrant 3, and the cosine is negative in quadrant 3, my, my question mark is negative. So the cosine of 240 is negative 1 half. It was either going to be positive a half or negative a half. It depends on what quadrant we were talking about. Tangent of negative 210. There are a couple ways to do this one. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show it this way. I'm going to keep that angle as negative 210 degrees, though. And 210 degrees, negative 210, has a reference angle of 30 degrees. Again, 210 minus 180 uh, is 30 degrees. Now the tangent of 30 degrees is 1 over square root of 3. Therefore, the tangent of negative 210 is also 1 over square root of 3. And i got to figure out where is negative 210. Well, if you go to negative 210, it's in quadrant 2. Uh, it stretches all the way around to quadrant 2. And the tangent is negative in quadrant 2. Therefore, my question mark is negative. So the tangent of negative 210 is negative 1 over square root of 3. Now we could have taken the negative out front found the tangent of 210, which I'll tell you is 1 over square root of 3, and then applied the negative later, we still would have gotten this. So if you want to factor the negative out, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, you end up with the same answer, though. I will say that if you factor the negative out, don't forget it's there. Now, cosine's a little different, because the cosine of negative 390 is actually the same as the cosine of 390 degrees. We could have taken the negative out here and simply found the cosine of 390, but let's go ahead and play around here. 390 minus 360 is 30 degrees. So we're talking about the 30 degree angle here in quadrant number one, because we've gone all the way around, and now we're talking about 30 degree angle. 
and the cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. Therefore, the cosine of negative 390 is, well, question mark, square root of 3 over 2. Now, since negative 390 is all the way around in quadrant 4, now again, we're, we're going negative here, so it was a whole trip around plus 30 degrees, and cosine is positive in quadrant 4, the answer is positive. Now, how do we factor that negative out? Remember, it just disappears with cosine. Really, it would have been cosine of 390. We would have ended up in quadrant one, and we still would have got a positive square root of three over two. So whether you deal with the negatives up front or whether you just go ahead and stay with the negative angle won't make any difference. Now that I'm looking at this, I really wish I should have taken that negative out of there and just found the cosine of 390. Because remember, the cosine of negative theta is exactly the same as the cosine of theta. Either way, though, you'll get the same answer. Sine of 5 pi over 4. Well, you want to recognize the reference angle is pi over 4 rather quickly. And so the reference angle is pi over 4. The sine of pi over 4, the sine of 45 degrees, is 1 over square root of 2. So therefore, our sine of 5 pi over 4 is 1 over square root of 2. Now we've got to worry about the positive negative. Now since 5 pi over 4 is in quadrant 3, and sine is negative in quadrant 3, we end up with a negative 1 over square root of 2. Had, if we're talking about the 45 degree angle in quadrants 3 or 4, the sine would have been negative. If we're talking about the 45 degree angle in quadrants 1 or 2, the sine would have been positive. How about the tangent of 11 pi over 3? Well, 11 pi over 3 minus 2 pi is 5 pi over 3. So 11 pi over 3 is coterminal with 5 pi over 3. And that means they share a terminal side, but it also means their sine, their cosine, their tangent is exactly the same. So I don't need to deal with 11 pi over 3 anymore. I'm going to deal with 5 pi over 3. I can deal with that. The reference angle is pi over 3. The tangent of pi over 3 is square root of 3. Therefore, the tangent of 11 pi over 3 is square root of 3. Since 11 pi over 3 is coterminal with 5 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3 is in quadrant 4, and tangent's negative in quadrant 4, I know we're going a long way here, aren't we? And that turns out that it's a negative square root of 3. Well, it had to be, because we were down in quadrant 4. Tangent's negative in quadrant 4. We had to get a negative answer. It turned out to be negative square root of 3, because the tangent of a 60 degree angle, and that's what we're dealing with here, folks, this is a 60 degree angle, the tangent's square root of 3. Because we were in quadrant 4, it was negative square root of 3. Had it been in quadrant 1 or 3, it would have been a positive. Well, how about the tangent of negative 11 pi over 6? And again, you could pull the negative out front and find the tangent of 11 pi over 6 and apply a negative, but I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to keep that negative in with the angle. We find our reference angle to be pi over 6, which you could kind of guess really quick here. With these radians, the reference angle is rather, rather quick to find. Now, the tangent of 30 degrees, pi over 6 radians, is 1 over square root of 3. You know your answer is going to be 1 over square root of 3. The only problem is, where is negative 11 pi over 6? Well, if you start at 0 and go backwards 11 pi over 6, you end up in quadrant 1. And all three functions are positive in quadrant 1, so therefore the tangent is positive, And we get 1 over square root of 3. Had we pulled the negative out front and found the tangent of 11 pi over 6, the tangent of 11 pi over 6 would have been negative. 1 over square root of 3. And that negative out front would have made our answer positive. Either way, you get the same answer. Cosine of 7 pi over 4. Well, right away you know that you're talking about a pi over 4 angle. Pi over 4 has a cosine of 1 over square root of 2. 7 pi over 4 is in quadrant 4. Cosine is positive in quadrant 4. Therefore, our answer is positive 1 over square root of 2. So if we're in quadrants 1 or 4, cosine is positive. If we're in quadrants 2 or 3, cosine is negative. Tangent of 7 pi over 6. Now, 7 pi over 6 is over there in quadrant 3. All tangents are positive in quadrant 3. Your reference angle is pi over 6. The tangent of pi over 6 is 1 over square root of 3. Therefore, our answer is a positive 1 over square root of 3. So after doing all these questions, hopefully you've realized what I'm trying to get to here. I don't want you to memorize the entire unit circle. I would like for you to memorize quadrant 1 really well. The sine, cosine, tangent, 30, 45, and 60 degrees. If you could do that, Life is pretty darn good, because then we use reference angle to figure out the sine, cosine, and tangent, no matter which quadrant we're in. Now, cosecant, 3 pi over 4. Now, remember, cosecant is the reciprocal um, of sine. And so I'm going to play around with the sine here real quick. And we look here, and our reference angle is pi over 4. And the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so I do the sine of pi over 4, which is 1 over square root of 2. I take the reciprocal of that, and I get square root of 2. So my answer is square root of 2. Now, whether it's positive or negative is our only question. So where is 3 pi over 4? 3 pi over 4 is in quadrant 2. 
sine is positive in quadrant 2, therefore cosecant is also positive, and our final answer is square root of 2. So I don't memorize cosecant, secant, or cotangent of anything. I know sine, cosine, and tangent, and then I can take the reciprocals. Cotangent 5 pi over 3, well I better know the tangent of pi over 3. Our reference angle was pi over 3. The tangent of pi over 3 is square root of 3. So we do 1 over the tangent of pi over 3. So our answer is going to be 1 over square root of 3. Now we have to just find out where is 5 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3 is in quadrant 4. Since tangent is negative there, cotangent is also negative there. So our final answer is negative 1 over square root of 3. That's my process. Find the reference angle. Find the sine, cosine, or tangent of that, depending on which function we're dealing with. If it's a reciprocal, then I take the reciprocal of that sine, cosine, or tangent. Then I know my base answer. And then I figure out if it's positive or negative after that by figuring out which quadrant I'm in. And again, I'm only go, always going back to sine, cosine, and tangent. I don't deal with cosecant, secant, or cotangent very well. Secant, negative 5 pi over 3. Here we are again, folks. You can look it over yourself, but my reference angle is pi over 3. The cosine of pi over 3 is a half. The reciprocal of a half is 2. And we end up with a 2 because we're in quadrant 1. Negative 5 pi over 3 stretches around to quadrant 1. And everything's positive in quadrant 1. This concludes Lesson 8. Please get to work on the homework for Lesson 8.